Back in September 2019, I went on a six-day hike across some of our beautiful Austrian mountains we've got around here. Before commencing that trip, I was browsing the internet on the search for a wide-angle lens which I could take with me on the hike. My standard lens is a 28-75mm, which in some situations, especially on a hike with a lot of wide landscapes, can be insufficient to capture the scenery. I did my research and came across the Samyang 14mm f2.8. Apart from that one, I had multiple other lenses on my mind as well. Firstly, the Sony 16-35mm G Master, but, well, that's not gonna happen due to financial reasons. I also checked on the Tamron 17-28mm, which would be the perfect match for my 28-75, however, 17mm didn't seem quite wide enough to me, so I also excluded that lens. Then, I found the almost perfect lens, it sounded so good, the Sigma 14-24mm. This lens had everything I wanted actually, the zoom capability, a fixed aperture at f2.8 or lower, and it's really wide. However, this lens also was just a bit too pricey for me. So I compromised and decided that the zoom capability isn't essential for me. The wide angle, the aperture and price were my priorities and the lens that fitted those conditions was the Samyang 14mm f2.8. I got it, but I didn't have much time to test it before the hike, so I just brought it along and used it straight away. This is about to be the very first time that I'm gonna see through the Samyang 14mm f2.8. I just turned on the camera and I still have the lens cap attached as you can see. Here we go. Yeah! <laughs> that is so freaking wide angle. Damn! Nice! Amazing. I love it already. Now, a couple of months later, I think it's about time to give this lens an online review to let you guys and girls know whether this lens is worth getting or not. I'm going to structure this review in five parts. I'll be going over the build quality, the image quality, the image appearance, does this lens produce a good looking image or not, the autofocus for both photo and video, and lastly, the pricing. Let's start straight away with the first point, the build quality. The lens has the typical shape of a wide angle lens with its big front element. While holding it in the hand, it feels like a well-built lens, not at all toy-like. An important element for this feeling probably comes from the material, which is not plastic, but I guess aluminium or some other kind of metal. The focus ring slides smoothly, and all in all, this lens feels quite premium. A small issue with the material is that it's very prone to fingerprints, and I also guess it's not exactly scratch resistant. A noteworthy aspect of the build of this lens is that due to the large front element, you are not able to screw on any kind of filter. To use an ND filter, you'd have to get one of those mounts which hold these square filters. Secondly, let's check the image quality. These images were all shot with the Samyang 14mm on the Sony a7 III. Generally, the image quality is fine, nothing to complain about. The image is sharp enough, I wouldn't say outstanding, but definitely adequate for my uses. I don't really care about corner-to-corner -corner sharpness because the corners are just not that important in an image, but I'd say the Samyang does an okay job at that. The corners are neither completely soft nor tag sharp. I find it to be totally acceptable. Of course, due to the extreme wide angle of this lens, the corners are noticeably distorted, which I'm completely fine with. I actually quite like the super wide look, but it is a characteristic of this lens to point out for those who have special preferences. So if you're looking for a lens with little to no distortion around the corners, this is probably not the right pick. Let's continue with the third point, the appearance and character this lens creates. The Samyang 14mm is definitely not your standard lens for a neutral look. 14mm is really wide and gives an almost extreme look to your photos. Even after using this lens for quite a while, it is repeatedly impressive how incredibly wide the image is when using this lens. Objects close to the lens will appear strongly in the foreground and get pulled closer to the viewer, whereas the background vanishes into the distance. On the other hand, this lens is also amazing to capture big, wide sceneries. Another great use of this lens is capturing scenes which are actually rather close to you and therefore difficult to shoot as a whole, but with this lens it's actually done quite easily. As an example, I often shoot photos for my friend Killian, who as a DJ often plays a set in various clubs. And when standing behind the DJ in a club, you rarely have a lot of space. But with this lens, I can stand only 2 meters behind him and still capture everything of him and the crowd, thanks to the wide angle. 
Even with such a wide focal length, you can get some decent shallow depth of field in certain situations. So if we have a look at this image here, this is a good example for the amount of blur you can get. I was pretty close to those red berries and I was shooting with an aperture of f2.8, which then created this image. But of course, as soon as the distance between the camera and your subject increases, the depth of field will rapidly become deeper. So all in all, it's a greatly versatile lens for many different uses and it gives you a unique, slightly distorted and rather exaggerated look. Now let's get to the fourth point of this review, the autofocus of this lens. My hiking trip turned out to be a great autofocus test for the Samyang, because as some of you might remember, I documented the whole journey and filmed myself quite a lot, and just hoped that the autofocus was recognizing my face. Before we get to that, however, let's check its capabilities on the photography side. Generally, I do not have any complaints about the autofocus when shooting photos. In good and clear lighting conditions, the speed and accuracy of the autofocus is fine. However, in difficult situations such as extreme low light, the lens does begin to struggle. But I haven't had any bigger frustrating issues with it when shooting photos. On the other hand, when shooting video, the lens does struggle a little more. During my hike, I'd often notice that even though I'm shooting with continuous autofocus, the lens would sometimes miss the focus and then not correct itself. Sometimes I had to intentionally half press the shutter to tell the lens to refocus. This is especially annoying in vlogging situations because I'd sometimes hold the camera at my face and the lens would slightly miss me so that it looks like it's in focus on the camera screen but on the computer I then realized that it wasn't. This makes this lens's autofocus not 100% reliable but at the same time, don't get me wrong, it does usually catch the focus. Additionally, I did an autofocus test for this review in easy lighting for you to see how the lens performs. So here we are testing the autofocus. I'm going to go out of image and then back into the image and let's see how fast and how accurately it refocuses. Is it focused? I hope so. So as you could see in the test video, in good lighting the lens is fast and accurate. Please note however, the speed might vary depending on your camera settings, because on the a7 III you can set how fast the refocusing should be to make it look more natural, which of course influences the focusing speed of the lens. I personally think that in this test the lens is showing its capabilities pretty well. Whether it is good enough for you is of course your decision to make. Let's also check how the focus is when coming close and going further away. I'm coming back here, coming very close. Does it keep track of me? I hope so. <laughs> Here we just saw that the lens also more or less keeps track of my face when I move around. It seems to be better when I come closer to the camera than when I lean away from it. When going back, it needs a second to get the focus, but for me, this performance is good enough. And lastly, let's also check how the autofocus works when it's not trying to focus on a face, but on my hand, for example. I'm a little skeptical if that worked, we'll see. In my third test, we can see that the lens does begin to struggle a little as soon as there's no face to set focus on. When I held my hand up, it seemed to hesitate until I moved my hand, then it immediately refocused. Something else to point out concerning the autofocus is the sound it makes. It's sadly not even close to silent. The motors are not extremely loud, but when vlogging, for example, the mic does often pick up the buzzing of the autofocus. I think this is definitely the best view so far on this trip. Let's get to the last point of the review, the price. If I remember correctly, I bought this lens for something a little under 600 euros, maybe about 550. Since then, the price hasn't changed much. It's currently at 538 euros. And that price, in my opinion, is very adequate. If you start looking for full frame lenses, you'll quickly come to realize that whatever you're going to find, it's going to be expensive compared to lenses for smaller sensors. And therefore, the Samyang is actually at the mid or even low end pricing compared to the rest of the choice. Of course, the way it usually goes is you pay less and get less, and that is not any different with this lens. The 14mm generally does a good job, but it's nowhere near perfect, which is to be expected when going for the lower price. In conclusion, the Samyang 14mm f2.8 was definitely a good purchase for me. It's not at all the best, but it's pretty good, especially for that price. It has its little struggles sometimes, but usually it satisfies me. So if you're looking for a budget, full frame, extreme wide angle lens with a low aperture, which isn't perfect, but quite good, I can genuinely recommend this lens to you. I hope this review was helpful to you and you could find some value in this video. If so, leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe and I hope to see you again. Gotcha. <laughs> Next week. Goodbye.